G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, this is the news at the moment. PayPal allows Bitcoin and crypto spending. So this is massive news because PayPal is huge. It's a massive financial institution. Now there is sort of, you know, some limitations to it though, because at the moment you can sort of, you know, use crypto within PayPal, but you can't buy uh, crypto within PayPal and take it out but still it's massive and the price rise that has happened today with this news uh, goes into play so we'll just have a little bit of a read first so PayPal has entered the cryptocurrency market announcing that its customers will be able to buy and sell Bitcoin and other virtual currencies using their PayPal accounts so again you can buy and sell it within the PayPal app but you can't take it out and swap it in other places and there is more than just Bitcoin so it's Bitcoin Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, which is good for Bitcoin Cash holders, but also Litecoin. So great news for Litecoin as well. And all of those coins have had a bit of a pump today with that news. So look, this is how it begins with the mass adoption. I wasn't sure if we'd get that mass adoption, you know, this, uh, you know, this kind of bull run, I suppose. I thought maybe we might get a little bit. And look, this still might not be full mass adopted. It still might take another halving and I'd say only one more halving really the way things are going at the moment. But this is a great start. And again, this makes it really easy for the average day Joe because PayPal will do all the custody for you. You don't have to worry about getting hacked or anything like that and having private keys and all that kind of stuff. PayPal do it all for you. The cryptocurrencies will be in your PayPal account. So you can buy it and then you can sell it. Uh, and it's just super easy. So again, it's not the full cryptocurrency experience, but this is what the masses really need. Something that's easy. They don't have to worry about, you know, seed phrases and all the rest of it. Someone else holds it for them. This is where the mass adoption will come. So great news, but I'll continue. Those virtual coins could then be used to buy things from 26 million sellers, which accept PayPal, it said. PayPal plans to roll out uh, buying options in the US over the next few weeks with a full rollout due early next year. So again, this is, you know, they're just dipping the toes in at the moment. They're still, you know, got to build some of the infrastructure and that. But come next year, which is, you know, when the, the bull run should really start to kick in based on previous history, that is going to be great news. And again, it's already started to push up the price now. Uh, and PayPal's stocks uh, have risen uh, a good chunk uh, upon this news as well. So it shows that, you know, you can kind of double dip in a way. You know, you can buy your Bitcoin. And if you know a company is about to list that they're in some kind of cryptocurrency, go ahead, buy those stocks, and you'll probably be in for a pretty good pump right then and there. Not financial advice. Definitely not financial advice. I'm, you know, that's, you know, I mean, that's a type of sort of swing trading and things like that. But, you know, again, just buyer beware when you do that kind of stuff. Investing simply for the long run would be easier. But look, that's still a good way to invest in the long run as well. But there's no guarantees. It just keeps going up. It could still pull back. But, you know, something to look at. And we'll have a look at the charts shortly. So Bitcoin price rose alongside the news, breaking the $12,000 mark. The other cryptocurrencies to be added first will be Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. All could be stored directly within the PayPal digital wallet. So that's what I mean. It all stays within PayPal. You're not taking it out at the moment and able to take it somewhere else. But you can uh, you know, simply own it and uh, leave it there. But you can also buy stuff with it. That's what PayPal's you know, the biggest thing for. You know, They are a payment uh, firm. And so now you can use cryptocurrencies to do you know, regular sort of shopping almost, not quite regular, but you know, again, anything that PayPal is connected with, you'll be able to use Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. So that's really big news, and that's pushed up the price. But also, we talk about the publicly traded firms that are now buying Bitcoin, because PayPal itself hasn't really invested in Bitcoin that we were aware of yet, but they will obviously have to start buying Bitcoin as their um, you know, patrons sort of say, all right, I'm going to put, you know, $50 into Bitcoin. Then they're going to have to go and buy $50 worth of Bitcoin. Or they'll probably, no doubt, have some Bitcoin ready to go. But it'll be interesting to see if it goes reasonably well, how quickly they change over. You know, I, I'm, 
let's say 2% of their cash, I don't know, maybe it's five, maybe it's 10 and turn it into Bitcoin. Because I mean, they're a payments behemoth. Imagine they invest, you know, 10%, 5% of their total net worth, uh, cash worth anyway, into Bitcoin that will push up the prices sky high. But also Ethereum, if lots of people are using Ethereum and buying it, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, they are going to boost up the prices as well. So this is massive news and everyone's been talking about it. I was working today, so I couldn't uh, report on it earlier, but massive news. But again, there's another company that's come out and now they are investing into Bitcoin and putting 10% of their net worth into it. So we go over here, Mode invests 10% of cash, so I shouldn't say net worth, their cash uh, reserves in Bitcoin. Mode, a UK fintech that just raised 7.5 million pounds from a listing on the London Stock Exchange has allocated up to 10% of its cash reserves to purchase Bitcoin and adopt it as a treasury reserve asset. So again, most companies that get into Bitcoin they're not really going to sell it and not the ones that are getting in right now. They will have done their research and they'll know it's early. Bitcoin's unlikely to ever go below 10,000 anytime soon, if maybe ever again. And if they're buying it at 12,000, 13,000, really, you know, the worst they might ever be off is that they're down 3,000 per coin. But again, that'll probably be the cycle low of the next cycle, if the cycle low is even that. You know, the more companies, uh, big institutions and that, that start to pile into Bitcoin, the higher I see the peak going. So, you know, before I wasn't really sure about, you know, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000 for Bitcoin. And people like uh, Raoul Paul uh, talking about a million dollar Bitcoin in five years, I actually think uh, that's probably going to happen. Uh, quite easily. I, I would not be surprised if we get more and more institutional adoption because once that starts to kick in and they're going to buy the larger amounts, you know, like the hundreds or thousands of Bitcoin, and then once retail start to kick in, I mean, you know, the total retail market will be huge, but they're only going to be buying little bits and pieces. There's not going to be a lot of retail that's going to be jumping in and buying, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 Bitcoin. There will be some but not many. It'll mainly be just small chunks of Bitcoin that you know the world will suddenly be able to adopt very, very quickly because of mainstream news making it more apparent and these big financial institutions simply offering it. So we already know that the banks over in America are now licensed to custody cryptocurrencies. Now we have a massive uh, payment avenue, PayPal, who uh, has cryptocurrencies for you. This is where people will start to pile in. And again, especially they don't have to remember passcodes and you know, seed words and all the rest of it and you know possibly losing it and getting hacked and all the rest of it. They simply go to PayPal or their bank and they do it all for them uh, and, and they'll be happy as Larry. Now, don't get me wrong, PayPal and the banks and that, they are going to charge you for that and I'm sure they will take a sweet ransom of it. Uh, you know, that's what they do. But again, for those who aren't tech savvy and it's all just too much, you know, they're not going to care. You know, if Bitcoin pumps by 20% in a couple of days and they lose 5 or 7% uh, of that because their bank, you know, chews it up, they're not going to care. That's still, you know, 14, 13%, you know, in a day or a week that they've just made in Bitcoin. They wouldn't have made that much in a year from banks any other time. So interesting times and we'll have to wait and see. Now what I want to go and do is have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So we've clearly broken out. We pumped way through that 12,500. I wasn't sure how we were going to do if we were going to kind of reject just short of it or go through and then come back and retest it. Again, I did point this out the other day. This looks a little bit like this. So I'm just waiting to see what happens. If this starts to get really choppy and, you know, jumping up and down in between these two like this, I will be worried that we're then going to see something like this. But look, if we pump up and jump all around here and then pull down to somewhere like, you know, sort of here or maybe even sort of here, we're still in a massive uptrend, you know. If we get up to, you know, nearly 14,000 and it pulls down to, you know, let's say even 11 sort of five, 
we've still done really well from uh, you know where we've come we're still following this line here i don't see this line being broken anytime soon uh, you know i'll zoom out and pull across i've only got this line going to here i think i'm going to have to you know stretch it out and i actually think it's going to get a whole lot steeper I, I think you know while these institutions really start to get busy and i think the really big sort of you know money is going to start to pour in at this level though this is where it's going to pour in once we truly break that 14 you know it's 13,800 and something but let's just round it up to 14,000 when this gets broken and it's not a fake out where it's broke through and then fallen back below that's when you know again the big institutions are going to go right this is on it's not a fake out because they're still you know if they're not already in they're still worried that this is a fake out and it's just going to roll over and not break this and then make its way down once it breaks above this and just continues to go up and maybe come back comes back and uses this as support they're going to know sorry just waiting for these charts they are going to know very very quickly that the all-time high that this is going to be broken if we can break out above this and then stay above this and again even if we come up really close and then come down and we retest 14,000 and then get a bit choppy around here again that's they're gonna start to pour in as soon as we come above this and there's just sort of you know it's clear that we have gone above this a little bit like this you know it's clear we're above this but you know this candles still very early so we got to wait and see if this will hold or if it falls down but that's where the big money is going to start. Things are going to move very fast once we get about above the 13,800. And we could, once we get above here, absolutely just fly through this. Because again, there's going to be big institutional money that is going to pour in. And they, because they're going to, you know, want to still consider themselves early movers and early adopters. So they're getting in before it hits its all time peak. Because generally, when something hits its all time peak, uh, it goes a fair way uh, above it before it starts to retrace and if they've done their research they'll know that you know in the cryptocurrency you know space generally you know you can double that easy if not even more so our all-time high is 40 you know is sorry 20,000 I'm sure they will understand that 40,000 will be quite achievable uh, and again maybe two three four hundred thousand so the money will start to move in between here. This is where it's just going to really rocket. Uh, and I don't think it'll happen uh, sort of, you know, in the next week or two. I think it's going to still drag out until after the elections. But I think around about December, we're going to get very close to starting to end of December to tipping this over. And look, it could happen earlier. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But if it's not sort of late December, I definitely think early next year in the early part of January we are going to break this and then it's just going to be off to the races as they say things are going to move very very quickly all right so again we've broken through here now Bitcoin has been in an uptrend for some time how's the stock market going so we looked at this yesterday and we're waiting to see if Bitcoin has truly decoupled S&P 500 so it's actually been going down so it's been going down since the 13th of October so that's over a week down 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 and Bitcoin has been going up since the 8th of October so we've been going up for a while yes we still got some little pullbacks and the same with the SP and S&P 500 it's got some little sort of pumps but it is on a downward spiral and I would say this is likely to continue to happen until they get more stimulus but look, not all stocks are basically going down, just the general overall trend at the moment, particularly with no stimulus. You know, people are really worried about putting their money into stocks. But the good thing is Bitcoin's pumping with no stimulus. But guess what's happened? Guess what's going to happen to Bitcoin when the stimulus does come out? And there is going to be more stimulus. They can't not do it. The, this market will fail. Uh, and people will just start to probably pile into Bitcoin even more if this starts to fail. So we could see some kind of super Bitcoin cycle. If stocks start to go down and there's no stimulus, and again, I don't see that happening. I believe there is going to be stimulus and very, very soon they are going to artificially inflate this market uh, until it corrects itself. They just won't let it 
you know, completely crumble. But either way, that is going to be super bullish for Bitcoin. But if this continues to sort of go down, people are going to panic, take their money out. And if they see cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and you name it, are still sort of going up while this is going down, the money will fly out of stocks and absolutely pump into Bitcoin. And that is when I think we could see a real super cycle uh, for Bitcoin. Whether that happens or not, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But we talked about uh, PayPal. So the big news, you know, PayPal getting into crypto cryptocurrencies and it's pumped the Bitcoin price. Let's have a look at PayPal's stock price. Have a look at that. That in the stock price world is what they call a juicy gain. That is a real juicy gain. Like They would be absolutely loving that. And again, this could even get more bullish. If PayPal then comes out and says they have put, again, you know, 10% is probably a pretty large amount and they may not want to risk that much, but let's just say sort of 5% uh, of their, you know, cash reserves into Bitcoin. This is going to pump even more. Their stocks are going to go more. Micro strategy stocks are going to keep going up as Bitcoin goes up. They are, people are going to, if they're investing in stocks, they're going to go want want to get into micro strategy because that, as Bitcoin becomes worth more and more, that company is worth more and more. So same thing will happen with Pit, uh, PayPal. The same thing will happen with Mode and any other company that starts to get into crypto and Bitcoin their stock price is going to go up. Even though stocks may fall, these ones will probably hold strong because their reserves are so rich. So very, very interesting times. Uh, and it's it's so hard to know what's going to happen. Like, you know, everything that I say, uh, putting it out there, it is a guess. It's an educated guess based on my time in the space. But nonetheless, it's it's just a guess. No one really knows what's going to happen. And if they did, they wouldn't be telling everyone because they would be manipulating the absolute hell out of the market and they'd be one of the richest people in the world. No one on YouTube is one of the richest people in the world. <laughs> no one on Twitter is one of the richest people. Well, maybe there might be one of the richest people in the world on Twitter. Uh, like, Well, there probably would be actually. Jack, uh, not Jack, uh, Bezos and... Uh, gates and all of that but they're not giving out a whole lot of trading strategies they just give out sort of random tweets so when you're looking at you know all the crypto influences and things like that just understand that they are guessing you know they don't actually know exactly what's going to happen and i'm putting it out there i don't know exactly what's going to happen it is an educated guess based on what has happened in history uh, and based on my time in the space as well but let's lastly go over and have a look at the markets so we'll just refresh this it says 394 we are oh so close to getting above that 400 billion dollar mark was 394 395 there we go it's still moving bitcoin is now at 12,800 i think there is a chance we might break that 13,800 dollars over this weekend now traditionally over weekends, there is a pullback. It doesn't always happen, but traditionally there is in the crypto markets. There's a pullback. Sometimes it comes Thursday night. Sometimes it comes Friday. Sometimes it comes Saturday. And sometimes it even comes late on Sunday. So there's no kind of exact rhyme and reason to it. But because we've had such a good pump over the last seven days, we just need to be aware that the weekend, there might be a reasonable sort of correction or a retracement or a pullback but there's no guarantees again with you know all the news that's coming out it could be just super super bullish and you know come sort of monday tuesday next week wednesday we're at thirteen thousand eight hundred dollars or fourteen thousand if we hit that fourteen thousand dollar mark i think we are going to move very very fast up to that twenty thousand dollar mark whether we smash straight through the $20,000 mark or we get a really sort of hard rejection at that sort of $20,000 mark and, you know, maybe fall back down to around sort of $14,000, you know, dollars, and maybe it doesn't even come back to $14,000. It could come back to, I don't know, $17,000, dollars dollars whatever. It's hard to know. But I think things are going to move very, very, very fast if Bitcoin gets over 14,000 and holds above 14,000. If it breaks to 14,100, 200, and then quickly has a, you know, a sharp rejection and comes back down to sort of, you know, 12,000, 13,000 or 11,000, 
then uh, the money's not going to move as fast. They're still going to wait. But once we clearly break above that sort of $14,000 mark, and it's obvious that we're not going back below it, i.e. we've maybe used it as uh, some support, watch this space. It's going to move fast. Uh, where are we? Uh, gas, 55, not too bad. But there we go, the BTC dominance is moving. I think this is gonna to go to 65%, maybe even all the way up to 75%. And I think it's not gonna sort of, you know, start to come back or retrace a little bit until Bitcoin gets to around sort of 20,000. Once it reaches its all time high, I think it is definitely going to start to retrace and people are gonna to start to pile into the altcoins. Because some of the altcoins have bled off a lot and a lot of people probably panic sold and sold at a loss uh, then to chase this Bitcoin pump and then when Bitcoin, you know, uh, stops pumping and starts retracing, they'll probably panic and sell from there. You know, the life of a trader, it's a hard one. That's why I just invest. I think it's so much easier. Let's have a look. What are the big movers? All right, reserve token. That's because one of the people that are invested in PayPal are in reserve token. So 44% Celsius network, 25% Litecoin, as I said, had a pretty good pump, 13%. So we got some double digits and even some pretty high single digits. So Ren uh, making a nice comeback. So well done. They're still down 11% for the week. Uh, Chainlink finally starting to make a move. You know, it got really low down around that, I think it was $8, $9, $10, something like that. Uh, and maybe it's found its bottom uh, and going to start moving. But again, I think all these altcoins, once Bitcoin hits 20,000, they're going to start to move and they are going to start to really pump. And particularly the good ones, good protocols will start to, you know, really start to capitalize. But that old saying, uh, a rising tide lifts all ships. That is generally what's going to happen. Uh, anything in sort of the top 100 will definitely start to rise with Bitcoin. Uh, and even ones out of the uh, top 100, don't get me wrong, they'll start to rise as well. Uh, very interesting times. What are the big losers, though? So Filecoin, hasn't that just had uh, a ton of yeah issues? It hasn't even been out that long. Like, you know, it literally only came out about seven days ago, and it has just fallen away to almost nothing. Governance issues and all sorts of stuff. And that is buyer beware when you're getting into you know, brand new projects that don't have a history and things like that. Now, Blockstack, I'm, you know, a little bit sad about that. I invested in Blockstack and uh, it hasn't done too well, but, you know, I didn't put my life savings into it, so it hasn't killed me. Crypto.com, a lot of bad news and they've been going down for quite some time. Uh, you know, word is that there's uh, issues with the staking rewards and the rest of it and they're actively, you know, out there campaigning at the moment trying to get, you know, people on board, but their price just continues to fail. So uh, troubling times for crypto.com. Uh, and then after that, really the only the first sort of three, well, really only sort of the first one has the biggest one. And then they're just fairly low uh, pullbacks. And a, a lot of the, again, you know, the stable coins and that are the other ones that lost. Other than that, everything is generally on the up. All right, I won't hold you, any, uh, hold you up any longer. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that game train right now, which is bloody awesome. Let's go Bitcoin and let's go crypto. And I'll see you next time.